Toyota CEO's startling confession about Tesla and EVs, you won't believe what he said. Upstart Toyota was a model of ingenuity and hard work to achieve success. They reached that pinnacle of success to become the largest automaker in the world in 2019 and continued with that crown through 2022 selling 10.5 million vehicles. Then in February 2023 a Toyota executive admitted that taking the skin off the Model Y, it was truly a work of art. It's unbelievable that was following his team's teardown of a Model Y electric vehicle. Originally introduced as a new vehicle in 2020, the Tesla Model Y sold an estimated 252,000, where the Toyota RAV4 sold 399,941 for 2022 in the USA. As of Q1 2023, the Model Y was the number one selling vehicle, not just EV, worldwide. It only has three configurations, all-wheel drive, standard range 279 EPA, all-wheel drive long range 330 EPA, all-wheel drive performance 315 EPA, with five exterior color options and one interior color option. Despite making cars for almost a century, Toyota has been having issues with its recent attempted shift to full electric vehicles. The BZ4X, Toyota's first global all-electric car, not built for them by Tesla, like the first all-electric RAV4 was, had a major safety recall. The wheels were literally falling off, that had seriously delayed the program to a crawl for the next two years. This same BZ4X model is also the basis of the Subaru Solterra, which had the same wheels falling off issue at its launch too. However, for context, as so many who follow the electric vehicles market have known, Toyota has been anti-battery electric vehicles, BV, and trying desperately to get traction with hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicles. Toyota did not either feel they could compete in BVs or that the maintenance costs were too low to remain as profitable or something else, the why is not clear. Unless they felt back then they could not make a battery electric vehicle as well as Tesla maybe. It should not have blocked them from seriously developing BVs along with other options. With the Prius, Toyota got to provide the Toyota know-how in, efficient internal combustion engines, plus an hybrid electric propulsion system. Thanks to the gift from Exxon in the late 70s, of hybrid car technology, that no other automaker wanted at the time. Exxon started work and developed the early modern version of hybrid electric technology as a proof of concept to help automakers with large gas guzzlers use less gas, during the 1970s second oil crisis, as they feared if oil was too expensive, people would stop driving gas cars and trucks. For reference, a gallon of gas, in 1975 was about 57 cents per gallon, then went all the way up to 86 cents per gallon in 1979 which, adjusted for inflation is $3.34 in 2023. At that rate of increase, gasoline could have ended up costing $36 a gallon in 2023 if it continued. If that $36 per gallon of gasoline happened, more than likely, very few people would be regularly driving a gas-powered vehicle today. That would be devastating to Exxon and other oil companies, which was why Exxon worked on the hybrid technology in the 1970s, to keep demand for gasoline at some level regardless of price. If that happened, EVs likely already would be dominant for individual transportation, with the electrical transmission grid infrastructure very well upgraded over time out of necessity, to handle the power flow needed and to make charging anywhere as convenient as finding a place for getting gas on a road trip. It's getting there on major highways with the Tesla supercharger network but not fully yet. When the second oil crisis ended in 1979, Exxon had reached a point where they had working hybrid cars but none of the automakers were interested except Toyota, since gas prices were falling likely recognizing that this was probably going to be an advantage if there was another oil crisis they began developing what for the time was cutting-edge technology, which became the first Prius that went on sale in Japan in 1997 and globally in 2000. Probably because the early battery technology used for the Prius was, for the time, a heavy large nickel metal hydride NIMH, battery pack hidden behind the back seats and was comparatively very expensive for the small capacity at the time, supposedly costing thousands of dollars for each battery. With about 13 electric-only miles, the Toyota management believed it would be unacceptably expensive to have a much larger battery pack to go more all-electric miles. With hindsight, they failed themselves in not further researching other battery types more aggressively. Not until 2011 did they introduce a plug-in version of the Prius with a lithium-ion battery. 
For reference a modern lithium-ion battery of the same size physically as the original NIMH battery used in the non-plug-in Priuses would provide significantly more, around 30-mile electric-only range. So recently, we have had prior Toyota management, the former CEO Akio Toyota, grandson of the Toyota founder, trying to sell the world on hydrogen as an alternative to gasoline probably because they did not seem to have the expertise in battery electric vehicle BV, technology. The problem with hydrogen is energy density, in gas form, it is significantly less than gasoline and less compressed in a heavy high-pressure tank, converting it to H2, and less than the stored power of a battery electric vehicle BV, in similar physical space. You would need a large number of highly pressurized heavy hydrogen tanks, that are more likely to explode than a gasoline or BV would, to get the range of a gas car. Creating hydrogen gas known as H2 is very resource intensive and usually created from breaking down natural gas, leaving a mixture of hydrogen, carbon monoxide, and a small amount of carbon dioxide by reacting natural gas with high temperature steam. Not an efficient process and creating pollution that switching to hydrogen is supposed to be able to solve, which it doesn't. Probably by recognizing that you can't make a hydrogen economy in an instant. Including building out new infrastructure for creating and distributing hydrogen and be less polluting than petroleum. The new Toyota CEO Koji Sato who took over effective April 1, 2023, is trying to aggressively improve Toyota's BV efforts to keep Toyota relevant in a decade from now. Automotive history has had a change of the guard on who is largest car maker often over the decades and if Toyota didn't act, they would be a shadow of their 2022 self. However, with the huge head start Tesla has over Toyota in battery electric vehicles, it will be a lesson for college economics courses if it was too little too late to change paths. Perhaps Mr. Sato is just in time in making meaningful changes. They are going all in on the upcoming but promising, solid-state battery technology, which when perfected should be superior to current liquid electrolyte batteries who are affected by severe heat or cold, hoping to have commercial ready by 2027 at the latest. Theoretically a solid-state battery should be able to go from 10% to 90 in less than 10 minutes with substantially higher energy capacity which is a bigger battery capacity than today's batteries. Solid-state batteries currently are much more expensive for their manufacturing processes and so far are very difficult to make in high volumes. For reference, Tesla launched the first modern mass-market battery electric vehicle, the Model S in 2012, using off-the-shelf laptop battery cells in a pack. That helped tremendously with cost and longevity provided by temperature-controlled battery management system or BMS versus other EV batteries such as the air-cooled 75-mile range Nissan LEAF that didn't have a BMS. Tesla's innovation and approach to a EV battery pack is now common, with many examples lasting 200,000 to over 1 million miles using batteries with a liquid electrolyte. Tesla has been researching and is currently building their first dry batteries now, used currently in the Model Y AWD standard range, known as the 4680 battery. Since 2022 they have been refining the production process for their dry batteries. On the subject of charging port standards, which Toyota could have been the technology leader of, with the Prius Head Start. Business Insider drove the new Toyota BZ4X EV from New York to Washington, D.C., and back, wrote on Twitter on June 14 Sawyer Merritt, a self-described Tesla investor and fan. The nine-hour drive involved three hours of charging. Even at 37%, the BZ4X refused to pull more than 35 kilowatts charging speed. A. Tesla, Model Y would need to charge a total of maybe 30 minutes the entire trip, he added, with a link to the article. Musk then took the opportunity to encourage Toyota to do what Ford and GM did. They should join the NACS coalition, the techno king, as he's known at Tesla, commented. This was after GM and Ford signed up to be on the Tesla-based NACS connector standard. Toyota is counting on third parties to help them catch up. By 2030 we will know if the leadership change was in time, since most of Toyota's BV announcements are currently scheduled for release in 2026 through 2028. What do you think of Toyota's direction? Would it make you want to wait to buy a Toyota BV versus competing models? Do you own a 4680 based Tesla Model Y all-wheel drive standard range? Let us know in the comments. Please like, subscribe, and share this video. Thanks for watching.